Good morning. Hello, friends. Welcome to Tattooing Tuesday. My name is Ruel Gaviola, and this is Rolling with Ruel, uh, the Ruel Reads edition. And um, I do this every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so good morning to you, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining. I see uh, Frank QB in the house. Also, James. Thank you, James and Frank. Appreciate it. And y'all who are lurking, I thank you as well. Uh, good morning, AJ. Good to see you on here. Um, just a little bit about uh, today. I've got two books I'm going to be reading excerpts from. Obviously, it is Tattooing Tuesday, so I've got my... So probably the... Probably my oldest um, Star Wars shirt that I have remaining. I've had many Star Wars shirts over the years. And uh, this one has been around, I want to say, like, maybe like 10 years or something like that. I got this. Was it? Yeah, it's. Oh, my gosh. It, it really has been about 10 years. Um, I traditionally wear this on Christmas Eve. Uh, my family and I. Well, not this last year, but normally we get together on Christmas Eve. That's how we celebrate Christmas as a family. Uh, my brothers and their families and everyone, we all get together at one of our homes with the kids and everyone else, uh, our parents, and we do a pajama party. And uh, for the first one, many, many years ago, I decided, you know, this has a little green. It's got a little red, so there's my Christmas uh, colors. And I threw this on, and so every Christmas I try to uh, wear it. So I don't wear it too often during the year just because I want to save it, right? I mean, it's it's definitely starting to get some wear and tear. Um, but, uh, you know, whether it's Star Wars or it's Christmas Eve, I will be wearing this shirt. Uh, good morning, friends. Hi. Oh, hi, Amanda. Thanks for joining us, folks. Amanda Panda will be on later today at 3 p.m. Pacific with uh, Book of Nerds over on uh, his channel for Bored in East L.A. Always recommend uh, watching that show. Uh, they hang out, talk games, and play a game. Um, today I've got three things I want to do today. Um, I'm planning to go from now until about 10 a.m., about almost two hours, um, because at 10, the Brothers Murph, they're playing two games every Tuesday now, so I would like to raid them at 10, and um, then I have to go out and do my errands uh, in the morning um, before I get... Um, get back here to do more work and also to prep for tonight's stream. Uh, tonight's stream, I've got a game that, well, I've got two games planned. Um, I'll, I'm just going to play one of them. I'm figuring out which one is going to get played tonight, depending on how well I uh, figure out the rules and stuff. Last night, I don't know if you if you were here last night, uh, Michelle and I played Pusheen, <laughs> the, the perfect game. Uh, cat or pick a card game like i said last night i had no idea this was a thing i just i know pusheen from facebook emojis uh but apparently it's like this huge thing which is fun so uh robinsberger sent this over they sponsored last night's episode and we had a lot of fun with this it's, it's a very light uh card game it's card drafting and set collection if you or you know your family or kids um, are into pusheen i mean highly recommend it um, it is light. I'm not going to pretend it's like this, you know, card drafting, awesome, you know, deep game. But for a light set collection game, a lot of fun. And the components and artwork, chef's kiss, uh, super cute and uh, definitely recommended. Um, t today, oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, today, I am continuing our reading of Thrawn. Uh, we are in chapter nine, yep, chapter nine. Uh, Thrawn is one of my favorite characters. This is the book by Timothy Zahn that came out a few years ago, so I'll be reading this. I am also thrilled to be reading... I'm going to read the first chapter of Star Wars Victory's Price. Uh, this is the latest in the Alpha Squadron series. Um, they I forget the name of the first one, but this one... just to me, Yeah, it, it will be going on sale uh, March 2nd. Um, reviews were embargoed until today. I'm not reviewing it, but I am going to be reading just a, a small excerpt of the uh, first chapter just to give you all a little feel for it. Uh, let me make sure. Okay, yeah, March 2nd is the, the release date. Uh, so I want to thank Del Rey. Uh, that's the uh, imprint over there on uh, Disney slash Lucasfilm that does all of their Star Wars uh, novels. So I'll be reading part of that as well. And then... Um, started doing this on Tattooing Tuesdays, I play a Star Wars game. Uh, today I'm going to play Star Wars Unlock, uh, the escape game. I have 
I had this, I got this a couple of weeks ago from my buddy Patrick uh, in a trade. So thank you, Patrick. Um, I have not been able to crack it open. I had it all set up the other day to play and I just got tired and had to put it away. Uh, so I'm going to, hopefully you'll stick around and um, watch me either, I, you know, honestly, I don't know what it is. It's about, I, all I know is it's Star Wars, so we're going to play it. Um, there are three adventures. Uh, we'll play the first one and then uh, hopefully in the uh, next two weeks we'll uh, play the other ones. They're about, I think, an hour long. Yeah, it says 60 minutes um, for one to six players. So y'all can play along with me because I am terrible at escape games. I don't know about you, but I am... I'm no good at them. So um, you can help me escape the empire or whatever we're going to have to escape. Uh, let's check out chat here. Okay, everyone's here. Thank you so much for joining, folks. Um, I'm going to... Oh, I've got tea. What are it all... Uh, I know it's uh, morning for uh, some of us. Stream snacks? You got any snacks going on? I just had a bowl of uh, Cheerios and bananas. Very simple, very... Actually, very boring breakfast. Um, but, you know, I had to get something in my stomach. I've got... I'm not doing all great today. I'm doing a different tea. This is a Tazo tea. Or Tazo's the the um, brand. And it is a passion tea with mango, lemongrass, and uh, passion fruit. Uh, there was another thing there. I, I already threw away the little thing. But anyways, it smells, de it smells delicious. Uh, Panda's gonna lurk during the game, so it's not spoiled. Oh, no worries, uh, Panda. Yeah, I know you have your copy as well. Um, I will. I'll start with the reading, then I'll get to the game. So it, I'll probably start the game around uh, nine a.m. our time. Uh, Joel, let's go. Hi, Joel. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're doing well. Um, I am going to be reading. So I'm gonna read. Actually, let's start with the good stuff first. I'm gonna start with Victory's Price. This is the newest in the Alpha Squadron. Um, uh, what is it called? The Alpha Squadron series of novels. And, um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Okay, y'all gonna, let me see. Can I do this uh, studio mode? If I pick, what scene is this? Here, here I am in OBS. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, what if I do this? Okay, that's the preview. Image. I'm trying to uh, add an image here of the uh, victory. Oops. Oh, by the way, did y'all see? Uh, I hope did anyone. I I know uh, Panda was there for a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I um, got to play over there on Facebook Live. <clears throat> excuse me, Meeples and Monsters. I don't know if y'all got to see. It. I okay. I was so first of all, I'm terrible with Tabletop Simulator. And also, like, learning new games, it always takes me a game or two to figure things out. But that game is, I think AEG's got a hit, another hit on their hands. I really, really liked it. Uh, it's a bag builder with a cool little, I mean, it's it's a fantasy theme. So you're going to get all the uh, standard tropes of, you know, um, you got your warriors, your clerics, or wizards. But it's really neat. I like how they, they take... Um, bag building and mix it with worker placement so you got this big board you go to place your workers there your meeples right but you can upgrade your meeples and upgrading them costs you know victory points so you lose victory points to upgrade your meeples and then those meeples go into bags so you're gonna pull you're gonna pull like four meeples every turn and then five and then six as the game continues and those meeples dictate uh, where you can go. I mean, you can always fight monsters and stuff. So it just, your meeples have different strengths depending on how you level up. And then you can always also build uh, buildings on the board. It reminded me of like Lords of Waterdeep, how those different um, buildings come out. And those buildings, you can play certain colors on them. And oh, it, it's just really good. And I got to play with two of the guys from AEG and they were great. Uh, they I totally got crushed, but I enjoyed it. Um, I was telling them, I said it a few times, I totally mean it. I can't wait to actually play the physical version because I'm not really like the whole tabletop simulator thing. I mean, it's cool, but it'll do, but I'm all about that physical, uh, edition. And I think just pulling the meeples out that tactile sensation is gonna be really neat. Um, I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, let me get some more tea. Okay. That helps. Let me go to the uh, next screen here and I'm going to have to fiddle with this, uh, online or i mean where is this here yep oops so let's let's hide thrawn shall we uh, 
Uh, nothing like some live uh, editing of OBS, right? I was trying to learn how to do this. I had the studio mode section or whatever, and I don't know how to do that. I mean, I do, but... Um... Okay, yeah. Okay, there. Hey, look at that. Uh, we're going to start with the Victory's Price today, folks. This is <clears throat> a uh, new novel by Alexander Freed. Apparently, Mr. Freed is a New York Times bestselling author. I think he's done other Star Wars stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Uh, he's done uh, Battle Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company. And also, oh, he did the uh, Star Wars Rogue One um, uh, novel. <clears throat> the telenovel, I guess. So this is Victory's Price. I'm going to read just a snippet of it uh, because it's, it's not out until March 2nd. Uh, the embargoes were um, lifted today as far as for reviews. So I'm not going to review it. I'm just going to, um, I'll read like the first little section here of chapter one. Let me see. Just a few. Yeah. Just to get you a nice little feel for it. Um, so the Victory Squadron series takes place, or I mean the Alpha Squadron trilogy takes place right after Return of the Jedi and before The Force Awakens. Okay, uh, so this is Alpha Squadron. <clears throat> and there was one, I, I believe this is the second in the series, so there should be a third coming out. Uh, so I'm going to read this, then we'll go to Thrawn, and then we'll play some Star Wars Unlock. So thank you again, folks, for joining me. Again, this is Ruel Reads. Uh, my name is Ruel Gaviola, and this is Tattooing Tuesday. And I'm starting off with Star Wars Victory's Price by Alexander Freed. Long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Part 1, Indigenous Songs of Lost Civilizations. Chapter 1, Naval Hymns of the Old Republic. This war is over, the Admiral said. We know it, and soon the Empire will too. General Hira Sindula almost believed him, but reminded herself, only rebellions thrive on only rebellions thrive on hope. Republics need sturdier foundations. The assembly room smelled of ozone and glittered like the interior of a sapphire, each facet a hologram flashing and wavering as transmission streams threaded the galaxy and manifested in the new Republic's military leadership. Eleven months prior, following the Battle of Endor, when the war had first been declared over, such a gathering would have been unthinkable. Now, thanks to the twin miracles of a newly claimed hyperspace comm network and the massive receiver system, systems of the X-Star Destroyer Deliverance, the architects of the Rebellion's victory exchanged reports like conquerors dividing spoils. The core of the enemy force has retreated, Geo Akbar went on and flapped a holographic hand at an unseen assistant. A star map sprang up at the center of the amphitheater, and ghostly heads, along with the heads of the flesh and blood attendees near Hera, refocused their attention. Coruscant remains under Imperial control, but the fleeting, fleeing loyalist armadas have ceded the rest of their territory to us. That leaves the land warlords and opportunists isolated. Eliminating the last of them will take time, but few remain a serious threat. Our battle groups are even now removing the holdouts, fleet building, and transport capabilities. Red blotches flashed onto the map, stains of Imperial presence on the galaxy. Blue arrows, each indicating an allied force, encircled the red. Hera recognized the larger occupied territories, the Anuat sector, the Falthine sector, the Crenothian Kren abyss. Kursant, where the Imperial regent controlled a single blockaded planet and trillions of lives, glowed softly in the map's center. A faint mark, like a blood drop, represented all that was left of the Imperial presence in the Nidalide array, where the Deliverance had spent the past week smashing blockades. It was, at a glance, a simple map with a clear message of New Republic supremacy. Yet fainter lines suggested a more complicated story. Trails from a dozen points led into a region where individual stars became a haze of fog in the poorly charted western reaches. What was left of the true Empire's military, what the Admiral had called the Loyalist forces, was secreted there on the edge of the unknown regions. Hera squared her shoulders and spoke in a voice that offered no challenge, no skepticism. Akbar viewed the war in ways foreign to her, focusing on the ebb and flow of fleets like tides rather than the struggles of mortals on the ground. 
but she had come to recognize the art artistry of his designs, even when she disputed their wisdom. How close are we to finding the enemy's base, she asked. The admiral smiled broadly and bowed his bulbous head. We're launching probe droids as swiftly as Troy and Metalorn can manufacture them. Chief of Intelligence Kraken will speak to other leads under investigation. Shall we begin with the division reports? The conference took on a familiar shape, and though Hera listened to what was said, filed away every word in the whirring part of her brain that cross-referenced tactical updates and coordinates for st strategic si significance, she found her attention less on the briefs and more on the emotional tenor of the room. <clears throat> Aaron Kraken spoke of the Empire's efforts to remain hidden, cited rumors of a harsh world occupied by legions of stormtroopers, and there was a predator's excitement beneath the frostbitten surface. General Rhea appeared exhausted, but her mouth curled into a smile as she spoke of the campaign to drive the Imperial Royalist Coalition of Zagobah. Admiral Hortor's snuffling and grunting was harder to parse, but Hera thought she recognized a wary resolve as he spoke of the sacrifices of the Inuring and its escorts to destroy a conspiracy orchestrated by one of Palpatine's mad visors. Hera began shifting her focus to her staff, felt discomfort behind her through a hint of human pheromones or of movement in the air, when Akbar called her name. And your battle group, General? Nightline is secure? Under control, at least, she replied. Two carriers under Major Juan, Jaun, will stay to support the local militia. Now that the battle group has punched through the blockade, the deliverance is returning to its primary objective. Back to the hunt, Horter growled, the base tingly, entangled in stang static. Back to the hunt, Hera agreed. We're continuing to work with New Republic Intelligence she cast a nod toward Kraken, neither expecting nor receiving acknowledgement, to locate the 204th Imperial Fighter Wing. Since that unit's departure from Cerebron, we've confirmed only a handful of sightings, but remain confident we're on the right trail. Knife slowed slow us down. From here on out, though, your last report suggested the 204th Shadow Wing is working with the Royalists. This interruption came in a voice that Hera didn't recognize. A dark-haired man in civilian dress stood six meters to the right of Akbar, alone on his holographic dais. <clears throat> Codes scrolled beneath his feet, indicating his transmission's point of origin, Chandrala, the temporary New Republic camp capital. Chancellor Mothma had been unable to attend the conference, but she was making her presence known. We believe they made contact, yes, Hera said. That's based on comm tracing. General Kraken can provide specifics. Then shouldn't the 204th be hiding in with the other Loyalist units? Your pursuit is taking you far from the Western Reaches. Hera swallowed her immediate dislike of the man's tone. It wasn't an unreasonable query. We aren't certain what the 204th is doing in this part of the galaxy. However, I'm confident that whenever, whatever the particulars, Shadow Wing represents a real threat. Since the Battle of Endor, they've been responsible for numerous military setbacks and lost lives, not the least of which were the genocide on Nacronis and the Cerberon uprising. The unit has proven its capacity time and again to inflict un unexpected harm. We shouldn't doubt such harm is ongoing. She was surprised by her own passion, nearly as surprised as Chancellor Mothma's aide, who had stiffened and retreated almost out of view of his holocam. You're among friends, she reminded herself. Maybe you should act like it? She smiled with what she hoped was humility before continuing. That said, I am equally confident this operation will be over soon. Shadow Wing has nowhere to run, and despite some recent losses, there's no one in the galaxy better equipped than Alphabet, than our intelligence working group, to find and neutralize this foe. Again, she had the sense of discomfort from someone behind her. She suspected she knew the source, but she had more, one more point to make. If by chance the Empire's fleet is located before we can find the 204th, the Deliverance retains the flexibility to disengage and support an engagement elsewhere. But I'm not worried about choosing one over the other. Shadow Wing can be defeated. The Empire as a whole can too. Mothma's aide nodded swiftly. The military leaders were less attentive, though Hera knew better than to feel slighted. 
Each had come to the conference with their own concerns, and each had worked with the others long enough to have a measure of trust. If Hera told them the 304th was a threat, they would believe her. If she told them she would end the threat, they would believe that too. The conference moved to other reports from other regions of the galaxy, and ended with inspirational words from Akbar that Hera largely neglected to hear. Afterward, the holograms vanished with a flash of light and a popping noise. When they were gone, Hera blinked away spots and heard the humming of the Deliverance's reactor. The voices of her staff rose, and she issued swift orders as they all moved toward the door. She was proposing a calm array adjustment to Stormvane when a young man made as if to break away. Without interrupting herself, without turning her head, she placed a hand slightly on the man's shoulder and pushed her fingertips in the fabric of his flight suit. He stopped. She felt the tension in his muscles. He was olive-skinned and wore his brown hair neat, contrasting with his unshaven cheeks and chin. His frame was slender and taut, like that of a jungle cat, seemingly too thin for the size of its prey. When Hera finished <clears throat> when Hera finished dispensing commands and was left alone with the youth, she faced him fully and asked, You're not going to make a liar out of me, are you? General, Wylak, Wylark said, Is your re- unit ready for the 204th? She kept her tone matter-of-fact. Wow would take her seriously regardless, so better not to unduly pressure him. Are the squadrons up to flight? She'd been monitoring Wow since she'd, been, she'd taken command of the Deliverance's Starfighter wing. She'd spent an hour each week conferring with him, less time than she'd have liked, more than her aides approved of, and nearly as much time speaking to the individual squadron commanders about his leadership. She knew the status of the pilots, and she knew that Wow, despite, despite his inexperience, was making fine choices regarding training and de- deployment. She wanted to know what he knew, however. He frowned, and she waited for an answer. Yes, he said at last, they are. We needed the time. Reconfiguring the squadrons came with a cost, but they're working together now. The pilots who haven't faced Shadow Wing are doing their research. The ones who have... They want another shot, and they won't get more ready sitting in the hangar. Hangar. Can they win? Hera asked. In a fair fight? While sm- smiled wanly, looking too tired for his age. I think, maybe. But going at Shadow Wing head-to-head has never gone well before. I'll do everything I can to give us an edge, Hera said. If it comes to it, though, we may have to strike in less than ideal circumstances. She saw resistance on Wild's face and pushed on. If Shadow Wing really is one of the only loyalist units operating outside Coruscant or the Western Reaches, that makes them one of few wild cards the Empire has left to play. That makes them valuable. You're learning, she thought, and felt a twinge of sadness. She tur- she tried to sound encouraging anyway. Exactly. I don't want them still operating when it's time for the last battle. They stepped together out of the assembly room and into the corridors of the Deliverance. Heroes ignored a chill at the burnished black floor paneling, the pale lighting grids and geometric doorways. The crimson emergency indicators had been disabled, but the New Republic refit had proceeded too quickly to make the vessel feel like anything other than an Imperial Star Destroyer. Somewhere in distant star system, Hera mused, Commodore Agate was on the bridge of a newly built Nadiri Starhawk, the pride of the New Republic fleet, symbol of everything righteous, built from dismantled Star Destroyers into something more powerful yet. If things had gone differently, if the Lodestar hadn't been obliterated over Troy and a replacement required immediately, Hera might have been aboard a Starhawk herself instead of a hastily overhauled death machine. She didn't begrudge Agate her command, but it was hard to walk the Deliverance without bad memories. While matched her pace, the last battle, he echoed. You believe what the Admiral was saying? You have doubts? I just remember what he heard about, we heard about after Endor. It's all been close to ending for a year now. There was no bitterness in his voice. I don't blame anything for, I don't blame anyone for being wrong, but I trust your judgment more than most. She had been as guilty as anyone in believing the war would end after the Emperor's death. She had known better, and still she would believed. She had longed for a return to her family, and she fought through that yearning now to answer Wow as honestly as she could. 
I believe it, she said. I keep telling myself it's optimism, but the facts add up. The Empire can't keep fighting. Wiles smiled thinly. Hero wasn't, as sh wasn't sure if he was satisfied with her answer or if something else troubled him. She didn't have a chance to inquire before, he said. We should hear from the others soon. Last word was sometime within six hours. Good. We'll, so we'll talk as soon as anything comes in. Wiles seemed to take the statement as a dismissal, and Hero let him go. That had been her chance to ask what was bothering him, and she suspected she'd berate herself later for missing it. But she had battle plans to concoct, and drills to run, and a chief engineer who needed replacing. There was far, far too much to do to bring about the Empire's end. And though Wiles' troubles were as real and vital as, anyone, as anyone's, all of her problems were urgent, shadowing most of all. Because in truth, she'd held back during the war conference. She didn't know what the 204th was doing, but the rumors escaping isolated systems were chilling, too horrifying, <clears throat> too horrifying, too unlikely, and too poorly sourced to discuss in the open. Very soon, within six hours perhaps, Hero would know if her nightmares had become reality. Okay, friends, that is Star Wars Victory Price, the latest, the newest in the uh, Alphabet Squadrons um, series, uh, trilogy. Uh, so that was just part one of chapter one <clears throat> of part one of the book. <clears throat> wow, we got to clear my throat here. Um, you know, we have a character here, um, the General Hera, right, um, talking about something happening with shadow wing and alpha squad is going to go have to take care of this really cool uh intro there uh i want to thank delray for sending that over i'm going to get some water here okay uh thanks for hanging out folks uh this is tattooing tuesday my name is ruel gaviola and we are reading star wars books hanging out chatting getting their day off started right um at least here on the West Coast, it is uh, 8.35 a.m. Next, I'm going to be reading from Star Wars Thrawn. Uh, this is Chapter 9 that we're going to go to. And then we will play Star Wars Unlock, the escape game. Okay. Uh, let me have another cup of tea. Check the chat here. Oh, okay. Think people are quiet. Cool. Hopefully, y'all are lurking and are working or lurking while working. Hmm. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, just a reminder, this Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, Michelle and I are going to be on Gen Con TV's channel. Uh, we will be continuing and finishing our game of Princess Bride, uh, the Princess Bride adventure book game, which we really enjoy. We're fans of the movie, so of course we're fans of the game. They, the theme is just, again, chef's kiss, uh, perfect theme, uh, fun little uh, pick up and deliver uh, cooperative game. So if you're interested and available, I'd love it if you all joined us over on Gen Con TV. Uh, that's Friday at 4 p.m. for the Princess Bride game. Okay, speaking of great books, this is it right here, Star Wars Thrawn. We're going to move on to reading Star Wars Thrawn. Again, thank you so much. Um, after this, we'll be re uh, playing Star Wars Unlock, and it is Tattooing Tuesday. Oh, let me change the cover here. We are reading Thrawn. Okay. Uh, Panda says, just trying to get up the energy to get up. <laughs> yeah. Sleep in. Take, take your time. And then at 10 a.m., folks, uh, the Brothers Murph will be playing a game. And then 3 p.m. today, uh, Amanda and John Gonzalez will be on board in East LA over on Book of Nerds' uh, channel. Okay, so here we go. Chapter 9 of Star Wars Thrawn. A great tactician creates plans. A good tactician recognizes the soundness of a plan presented to him. A fair tactician must see the plan succeed before offering approval. Those with no tactical ability at all may never understand or accept it. Nor will such people understand or accept the tactician. To those without that ability, those who possess it are a mystery. And when a mind is too deficient in understanding, the resulting gap is often filled with resentment. Let me get this straight, Captain Rossi growled, peering up at Thrawn and Eli. You're saying you let yourself be captured? Yes, ma'am, Thrawn said. 
It seemed the simplest way to find and rescue the Dromedor's crew. Damn stupid risk, Rossi said flatly, especially when you didn't even know if you were, they were still alive. I thought the chances were good that they were, ma'am, Thrawn said. Signy is not a malicious or casual killer. If he were, he would have simply shot the three of us once Ensign Barlin unlocked her, the hyperdrive. Our backs were to him, and he had a clear shot. Which makes two stupid risks, Rossi said, and not just of your own life, but also those of my crew. It was not a serious risk, Thrawn said. I was watching his reflection in the Tabana cylinders. If he had prepared to shoot, I would have noted the change in his stance in time to stop him. Rossi gave a snort. <laughs> you have an answer for everything, don't you? Part of my job is to anticipate the actions of our enemies. Rossi threw a look at Eli as if daring him to say something. But Eli knew better. He'd seen the captain in this mood and knew she was twit itching to find something she could throw back in Thrawn's face. Only in this case, she was out of luck. Thrawn had outmaneuvered Signy. He'd outmaneuvered the pirates and he would outmaneuver Rossi too. Sounds more, more like dumb luck than sound planning, the captain said, shifting her Claire back to Thrawn and turning up the intensity a couple of notches. There's no way you could have known Signy wasn't exactly who he claimed in, until he pulled out that blaster. On the contrary, ma'am, I knew he was a plant from the very beginning, Thrawn said calmly. His clothing was covered with dust, indicating that he had been in the area of the Tabana cylinders and the engine room. A member of the crew would have warned us about the supposed reactor leak as soon as he realized we weren't pirates. Yet he didn't. Eli winced. He'd missed that one completely. Big mistake on his part. More of a calculated risk, Thrawn said. He knew there was a danger that someone would notice the lapse. But he also knew that if he drew our attention to the leak, we might wonder why he had mentioned that one specific danger. That might cause us to examine the reactor compartment more closely, which he could not afford. Because if we had, we'd have walked in, walked in on the rest of the pirates, Eli said, nodding. That would still have led to our capture, as they outnumbered us signif significantly, Thrawn said. But Signy would then have lost the chance to restart the hyperdrive and take the Dabana, which was his primary objective. Unless he forced Barlin and Lanio to do it at Blaster Point, Eli said, a shiver running up his back. Signy might have had some moral limits, but Eli wouldn't put a bent credit on finding any such ethical standards in Angel or the rest of the pirates. He would not have succeeded. Maybe, maybe not, Rossi said, which brings us to your sense of priorities. Ma'am? You had a decision to make, Lieutenant, Rossi said. The Dromedar, the Dromedar and its cargo, or the pirate frigate and the Dromedar's crew. You chose the latter. She shook her head. Wrong choice. Thrawn's eyes flicked to Eli. We saved the crew, ma'am, he said, sounding as confused as Eli had ever seen him, and captured several pirates and their ship, none of which stacks up against even one tank of Tabana gas, let alone 20, Rossi said bluntly. I'm waiting for a ruling from Coruscant, but until they send one, I have no choice but to suspend you from duty. Eli caught his breath. Ma'am, you're... He broke off as Rossi shifted her glare to him. You have something to say, Ensign? He does not, Thrawn said, throwing a warning look at Eli. I presume I will be left behind on Ancien while you put, continue your patrol? Yes, Rossi said, looking extra annoyed at the fact she hadn't gotten to deliver that bit of the message herself. Whether you're confined to quarters will be up to Admiral Wiska, Wiskavis. Dismissed. Eli clenched his teeth. This was completely unfair. He opened his mouth to say so. Rossi got there first. One word out of you, Ensign, she warned, and you'll stay here with him. That won't be necessary, Captain, Thrawn said. I am certain Ensign Vento will be of great value to you on the remainder of the patrol. Are you now, Rossi said. On second thought, I can hardly deprive my special duty lieutenant of his aid now, can I? Congratulations, Vento. You've just been assigned shore leave. Extended shore leave. Eli felt his stomach knot. What the hell? Barlin will fly you down to the base, Rossi said. Her eyes were still on Eli, as if she ex still expected some comment or protest. Again, Eli knew better. I'll tell Wiskovis to expect you. Dismissed. They left the office, Thrawn silent, Eli still silently seething. What, ha what had that been all about? Because it had been deliberate. 
Rossi might not realize it, but then she hadn't spent as much time with Thrawn as Eli had. To Eli, the signs had been clear as day. The Chiss had deliberately maneuvered the captain into kicking Eli off the blood crow along with him. But why? Why would he do that? Had he manipulated Rossi just for fun or the challenge of it? Or was there something else going on behind Thrawn's glowing red eyes? Could it be that he was so afraid of losing his aid that he didn't dare let Rossi or anyone else aboard the Blood Crow see what Eli could have actually do? To be honest, Eli had only a vague idea himself of what that could be. He was good with numbers and supply figures. Hell, he was extremely good with them. But whether he would show any of that talent during the presumably brief time he would be out from under Thrawn's shadow was questionable at, least, at best. My apologies, Ensign Vanto, Thrawn said quietly into Eli's tangled thoughts. I realize you wish to return to the Blood Crow. Under normal, normal circumstances, I would have been pleased to allow you to show Captain Rossi and the others the depth and range of your abilities. But conditions here are not normal. Are conditions ever normal in the Imperial Navy, sir? Eli growled. Still, he could feel curiosity stirring through his re resentment. There was an intensity in Thrawn's tone that was oddly contagious. What's particularly abnormal about this one? Captain Rossi is correct. The Tabana gas is of great value and therefore of great interest, Thrawn said. If we are to find the Dromedar before the cylinders are removed, we must move quickly. I heard the ISB is sending an interrog interrogator, Eli said, his stomach tightening in distaste. The Imperial Security Bureau was a necessary part of keeping order, but it sometimes seemed to go out of its way to be disliked, mistrusted, and feared. I doubt the pirates will have many secrets left after he's done with them. That is indeed the ISB's reputation, Thrawn said. But the interrogator may not arrive on time, or may not extract the necessary information quickly enough. Remember, we have only four days before Angel will notice his ship's failure to reappear and become suspicious. Or at least get mad. Eli frowned sideways at Thrawn as it suddenly hit him. You're going to interrogate them? Assuming I can persuade Admiral Vis Wiskovis to pers permit me, Thrawn said. Tell me, what do we already know? Eli waved a hand. Pretty much nothing. Thrawn remained silent. Eli clenched his teeth. Fine, he said with a sigh. Another game that Thrawn was very good at. We know that they were six days away from the rendezvous, including a stop to drop us and the other prisoners somewhere. As you said that, as you said, that leaves us four days to get wherever they were going. But we don't even know which direction to look. We have the captured sensor data from the pirate ship, Thrawn reminded him. Eli shook his head. You can't tell from the departure vector where a ship is going. True, Thrawn said. But it would have been inefficient to leave in the entirely opposite direction, especially as they know they have limited time before the Dromedar's disappearance becomes general knowledge. We may therefore make an initial assumption that their destination is within a cone of no more than 90 degrees centered around their departure vector. Eli pursed his lips, and that cone covered their current location at Ancien, so at least getting to Signy's destination in four days wasn't completely out of the question. Wherever there was, on that they still didn't have a clue. What else do we know, Thrawn pressed? What did Angel call their rendezvous? Eli had to search his memory. He called it the Tropo. I presume you've already looked for a planet by the, that name? Yes, Thrawn said. There is no planet or major city listed in that registry. But note that he called it the Tropo, not simply Tropo. They may imply a colloquial colloquial or slang term. A term for what? I do not yet know, Thrawn said, but I believe that with the right questions we may learn that. What else do we know? Eli shrugged. We have the faces of our prisoners, but even if they haven't altered or deleted their data files, and a lot of criminals do exactly that, it would take days or weeks to sort through all the planetary records and figure out who they are. We may also have the pirates' own name for themselves, Thrawn pointed out. Do you remember? I asked you about it at the time. You mean Kalos? Eli asked, frowning. I thought that was just some slang word. I believe it is more than that, Thrawn said. Angel reacted too strongly to my interest in the word for it to have been innocent or harmless. I didn't notice any reaction. It was somewhat subtle. 
I'll take your word for it, Eli said, starting to feel some cautious excitement. A mid-rim base like Ancien might, have, might not have complete files on the Empire's citizens, but it should have a list of the major criminal organizations without, within its jurisdiction. Have you looked them up? I have, Thrawn said. There is nothing listed under that name. Oh, Eli said, feeling his excitement fade. But there are several possible connections I may be able to exploit, Thrawn continued. We shall see once I am able to speak with them. So do you want, what do you want me to do? Eli asked. I assume you maneuvered Rossi into leaving me here for a reason. Two reasons, Thrawn said. I need you to monitor my interrogation. There may be a point where you will be uniquely useful. All right, Eli said, wondering what Thrawn could possibly mean by that. Uniquely useful wasn't a term anyone had ever applied to him. And the second reason? Thrawn was silent a moment. For what I am planning, I may need a witness, he said quietly. You, Ensign Vento, will be that witness. Eclectic Camels in the house. Thanks for the reminder to hydrate. Spending those Bruno points. Appreciate it, friend. And thanks for hanging out. Chits and giggles. Good to see you. I hope everyone's having a good day. Good morning. Whoops. Good day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you may be. Um, let me get some of my tea. I'm drinking a passion tea today. We are in chapter nine of Star Wars Thrawn. We're about, I think, halfway through this chapter. Yeah, a few more pages. <clears throat> Thank you again for hanging out. Folks, uh, hang out with me. I'm going to finish up this chapter, chapter nine of Star Wars Thrawn. And then we're going to be playing some Star Wars Unlock, the escape game. Or you can lurk or hide um, just in case you have the game and you haven't uh, gotten to your copy yet, as Amanda Panda will be doing. Uh, let's get back to the book, shall we? The, pi the three pirates are expressionless as they walk into their side of the interrogation room in single file. Each looks around the room as he enters, noting the gray metal walls, ceiling, and floor. Each also quickly spots the interrogation desk beyond the transparent barrier that bisects the room. Thrawn waited until they were seated. Then he touched the intercom control set into his desk. On both sides of the barrier, indicator lights blinked on. Good evening, he said, speaking toward the microphone. I am Lieutenant Thrawn. None of the three speak in response. But their facial heat, heat increases. The muscles in their cheeks and throats and around their eyes shift between sullenness and hostility. The larger body muscles beneath their prisoned clothing twitch and tighten in distinct patterns. You are no doubt wondering why you are here, Thrawn continued. I wish to offer you a deal. Their facial glows briefly intensify, then fade to their previous levels. You don't believe me, of course, Thrawn said. But it is true. We have a saying, grasp the useful, let the useful fly. You three are the useless. And you can go plop yourself straight back to Pantora, the tallest of the three retorted. There is a distinctive twang to his voice, a twang that had become apparent during the passage to Ancien. It is not identical to Vanto's accent, but with strong similarities, likely indicating similar wild space roots. If you came here to insult us, you're wasting your time. I intend no insults, Thrawn said. On the contrary, I'm impressed that successors of the Pirate Queen, Quana still operate throughout the galaxy. The pirate's facial heat increases dramatically. Their eyes widen, their throat muscles stiffen. They immediately try to hide their reactions, but they are only partially successful, and it is already too late. You surely did not believe that you were unnoticed, Thrawn continued. Indeed, Grand Moff Tarkin has long noted that remnants of Kana's martyrs and had escaped their captain's fate. I have been in contact with Tarkin, and he has expressed a desire to come to Ancien and deal personally with this last trace of his old enemy. We have no idea what you're talking about, the pirate spokesman said. A brave but useless buff, bluff, Thrawn said. However, as I stated, I would prefer to trade you for your leader. Grand Moff Tarkin might not agree, but I am here and he is not. The true irony is that your leader, leader Angel holds much the same philosophy as I do. What do you mean? You surely noted which of your colleagues were selected to travel with him to Signy's rendezvous, Thrawn said. More importantly, 
you surely noted which of you were not chosen. You and the remainder who are left to die. One of the pirates looks at their spokesman, his expression tense. The spokesman ignores him, but his own facial glow intensifies. From both short-term and long-term perspectives, it was a reasonable decision, Thrawn continued. In the short term, Angel loses several experienced crew, but your capture and interrogation gain him additional time to remove the Tabana cylinders from the Dromedar. In the long term, he pairs away those he deems no longer useful to his do- goals. And the Marauder? The spokesman shot back. Sorry, Blueface, but Angel's not stupid enough to dump a perfectly good frigate for nothing. As I said, long term perspective, Thrawn replied. Now they have the sh- pirate ship's name. Signy has, <clears throat> Signy has demonstrated the efficiency of his more subtle approach to ship capture. He has no doubt persuaded Angel that the Dromedar will serve him better than the Marauder. Certainly a freighter permits a more stealthy approach to its victim than an armed frigate. On the desk, his data pad lit up with a message. Frigate Marauder linked to five hijackings, hijackings under ID code Elegens Hope. Especially one that has come under as much scrutiny as Elegance Hope, he added. You're talking Parth spit. The pirate spoke in his voice as low and contemptuous. I applaud your tenacity, Thrawn said. But surely you can see it is of no value. I already know too much for you to save yourselves. And once Tarkin arrives, we will know everything. Unless you choose to accept my offer, you are lost. The three pirates look urgently at one another. Let's hear the deal, the spokespersons, the spokesman said. I will give you and your fellow prisoners a civilian transport, Thrawn said. It is partially derelict, but it should safely convey you from this sector before re- requiring repairs. In return, you will identify the system where Signy and Angel have taken the Dromedar to remove the Tabana. What guarantee do we have that you won't take the information and turn us over to Tarkin anyway? I offer my word, Thrawn said. I also simp- offer simple logic. You three are too young to have been any of Kana's original pirates. Tarkin's, Tarkin's lingering vengeance will not therefore be directed specifically toward you. More important, I know Tarkin. He will take extra pleasure in the fact that Angel will know you were freed as a reward for betraying him. You can't know Tarkin very well if you think he ever shows mercy to anyone. Precisely, Thrawn said. His reputation does not permit such such actions. That is why I will release you on my own initiative. He will thus be able to take full pleasure in delivering the news to Angel without the need to make the decision himself. He paused. The pirates did not speak. That is my offer, Thrawn said. I will wait while you discuss it amongst yourselves. He touched the intercom switch again and the indicator lights went out. The pirates weren't fooled. They had probably been interrogated in such places before and knew that the intercom remained live despite the evidence of the indicators. Thrawn had played all his cards, but the pirates had a card of their own to play. Leaning close, they began speaking softly together. In a language they would have learned growing up in wild space. A language that was used only there and in the unknown regions. A language that had never been programmed into Republic or Imperial translators or protocol protocol droids. A language they could reasonably expect no Imperial had ever even heard of. Psy Bisti. What do you think? The spokesman asked the others. You think we can trust him? He's an Imperial, the second scoffed. Of course not. Who cares, the third retorted. You heard him. Tarkin's coming. The spokesman snorts. (laughs) You listen too much to Angel's ghost stories. Even Tarkin can't be that bad. No? Then how come Angel keeps telling the stories? I tell you, Tarkin's pure evil. Speaking of evil, the second man said, what do you think Angel's going to do if he finds out we sold him to Blueface? Good point, the spokesman said. But maybe we could have this both ways. Let's take the offer, spin Blueface some froth, then hightail it to the Tropo and warn Angel. If we're fast enough, we should be able to get down th- get down there before Tarkin or even Blueface can chase us down. Unless they've already cracked the static lock, the third man warned. Then we get there just in time for our own ship 
for our ship to fall apart and leave us stuck until Tarkin catches up with us. You think they're going to find an Ubdub Squash who can slice work like that? The spokesman countered, his voice heavy with contempt. Not a chance. Angel's going to have to bring in someone from outside. Maybe Signy already did it. Signy was supposed to get the static lock off before we ever came on board, the spokesman said. Don't worry, we've got plenty of time to get there. Then let's, get, then let's take the offer, the second man said. Give him, I don't know, give him something and get the hell out of here. Before Tarkin gets here, the spokesman, su- spokesman suggested. Go ahead and laugh, the third man growled. I'm not. Fine. The spokesman looked up at Thrawn and lifted his hand. Hey, he called in basic. You, Imperial. Thrawn tapped the intercom switch. Have you made a decision? We'll take your offer, the spokesman said. Angel and Signy went to Karthaston on a planet named Kedum. You need coordinates? Thank you, we can find it, Thrawn assured him. Anything else? Just that you better hurry if, you, if you're going to catch them, the spokesperson said. They won't be there any longer than they have to. I agree, Thrawn said. Thank you for your cooperation. The guards waiting outside will escort you to your new transport. And the rest of the crew, the spokesman said. Your companions are ready, already on their way, Thrawn said. One more thing. You have been given a second chance. I suggest you use it to remake your lives for the better. No need to preach, brother, the spokesman, spokesman said as they rose from their chairs. Trust me, you'll never hear from us again. They filed out. Thrawn watched them leave, and as the door closed behind them, he stood and faced the door, exiting his side of the room. It slid open to reveal Vanto and Admiral Wiskovis. Admiral? Lieutenant Wiskovis re- nodded in return. That was about as impressive a performance as, as I've ever seen. Thank you, sir, Thrawn said. Do we have it? We do, Vanto said with satisfaction. Uba, in Barsa sector. It's a nice quiet place to park a freighter for a while. It's the right distance from where they nabbed the Dromedar, and the insulting slang term for it is Ubdub. Squalch. Is also a, squalch is also the local slang term for the inhabitants, who are generally not considered technical, technological geniuses. He smiled tightly. And there are a bunch of major merchant centers on the northern continent, which local slang refers to as trading posts. Or, for short, tropos. We have it, all right, Vuskovis said. Not that I have the slightest idea why we have it. How did you know this group used to work with Kana? I did not know for certain, Thrawn said. It was only a guess based on their name. What name? Vanto asked. He frowns in confusion. Angel? Kulos, Thrawn said. The name Angel gave their group. I heard that as Q-less, or a group without a Q. After we arrived... While we were waiting for Captain Rossi to return, I did a search of known criminal groups. There were a number that included a Q reference, but Kana's marauders seemed the most likely to have the resources, the history, and the contacts to deal with stolen Tabana gas. Seems like kind of a long shot. It was, Thrawn agreed, but Kana used to sign her thefts with a coded reference to her name. It seemed reasonable that the remnant of her gang would also enjoy leaving such clues. Still a long shot. Wiskovis shakes his head. What if you'd been wrong? There would have been no loss, Thrawn said. The ISB interrogator would have arrived, and the questions would have proceeded on schedule. All would have all would have been as if I had not made an attempt. Except you wouldn't have left yourself wide open to a court-martial, Wiskovis said. His voice is grim. I should at least release the transport myself. I cannot allow you to do that, Thrawn said. Excuse me? Wiskovich draws himself up stiffly, his expression hardens, his throat muscles tightening. Vanto's expression holds sudden discomfort. You can't let me do that? I think what Lieutenant Thrawn meant, sir, is that he strongly urges you to remain as far outside the situation as possible, Vanto put in quickly. I believe his goal is to bring any blowback on himself, leaving everyone else out of it. Very noble, Wiskovich said. His expression is still stiff and angry. And if I choose to do otherwise, this is my base, Lieutenant. What happens here is ultimately my responsibility. True, Thrawn acknowledges. But there is still much that can go wrong, and the balance of success and failure is still undetermined. I would not wish you to bear any blame for my plan and actions. Or accept any acclaim for his success? Vanto winces. I don't think that's what Lieutenant Thrawn meant, sir, he said. Well, then maybe I should hear that from the Lieutenant himself, Wiskovis said. If this succeeds, I would, of course, 
freely acknowledge your support, Thrawn said. But if it fails, be advised that when I am brought before court-martial, Ensign Vanto will testify that I acted alone. Excuse me, Whiskavis said again. His eyes widen as he looks at Vanto. His facial heat increases and the muscles in his cheeks tighten. Did he just say you were prepared to commit perjury, Ensign? Yes, sir, he did, Vanto said. The tension in his voice increases, his expression showing extreme discomfort. As I said, his goal is to protect you and your career from whatever comes of this. For three seconds, Whiskavis remained silent. There is no easing of his tension and anger. This discussion is not over, he said at last. But right now we have work to do. What do you want me to? When do you want me to send a force to Uba? You should wait until the released prisoners have made the jump to light speed, Thrawn said. We do not want them noting the preparations and becoming suspicious. You should also contact the ISB agent and alert him to reroute his ship to Uba. And then? Lieutenant Thrawn only promised to let them go, Vanto said. His tension also has not eased. He never said he wouldn't recapture them if they went to Uba. Fine, Whiskavis said. Anything else? I would also suggest you send a force to the other site they mentioned, the city of Karthistan on Ketum. I thought they just said that to throw us off track. <clears throat> that was certainly its primary purpose, Thrawn said. But the name came too quickly and too easily. We may find that Keenum was there, was where the Dromedar's crew was to be released. And Signy said his people would be watching, Vanto said. Yes, Thrawn said. It may be possible to learn who exactly his people are. If we catch them, Wiskavis said, started to and started to turn back to the doorway, then paused. You didn't really contact Grand Moff, and Moff Tarkin, did you? No, Thrawn said. I have never met the man. <laughs> Probably a good thing, Wiskavis said. And if this is the way you talk to superiors, Lieutenant, you'd better hope you never do. Come on, we have pirates to capture. Oh, friends, that is chapter nine of Star Wars Thrawn. Oh, so good. I love watching or reading about how Thrawn maneuvers and outmaneuvers people. So slick. And that is chapter nine. We will continue chapter 10 next week. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, Hornus lurking like a Sith. Nice. And uh, James is lurking while working. Thank you, friend. Uh, me Hammer Time. Glad I didn't miss Tattooing Tuesday. Thanks for joining us, Me Hammer Time. Always good to see you here. So, I have read a small excerpt today of Star Wars Victory's Price. So, thank you. For, um, thank you for uh, hanging out. I've also read Chapter 9 of Star Wars Thrawn. This is our continuing saga, our reading of uh, Star Wars Thrawn. Uh, James says, thanks, Uncle Ruel, for the Tuesday morning story time. I'm happy to do it. I really do enjoy this. Um, I, I've said this before. I'm trying to read more this year. I have a couple of books on my nightstand that I'm slowly but surely going through. Um, I, I should probably go every night, but I, it's more like once a week or so. Uh, but I also read this once a week, which is great. Um, this is really uh, nice to do. And I thank you all for uh, joining me and hanging out. Appreciate you all. Anytime you spend time here, I, much, I really do appreciate it. Um, we're going to play Star Wars Unlocked next, folks. So let me set this up. Whoops. Let me move the uh, mic over here. Hopefully you all can still hear me. I'll put the mic here so we can get the game. Uh, let's go to the game. Hey, there it is. Star Wars Unlocked. And let me fix this setting here real quick. Do, do, do. What's new with you all? Anything new, folks? Any games you're playing that you want to talk about? Who are Star Wars fans? Who are not? Have anyone has anyone played this game? So I know Amanda. She has a copy. She hasn't played yet. So she's going to lurk. Thank you, Amanda, for lurking. More games, please. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that, Ross. I, I'm going to go back to that real quick. Yeah. So what you don't see is the mess on the, on the ground. But I really wanted to just change things up. I had done this before. Um, probably like middle of last year uh, on a suggestion from Rado. Um, I had done some work with him. We had uh, guested on each other's, uh, I guess on his podcast, he guested on my uh, Top 3 at 3 show, um, which I'm hopefully going to be bringing back soon. Uh, so he, he did it, and I, I, I really like the look, and he suggested it. I did it. The only thing about this, which is tough, is you can't see the games behind. So I 
And I'm going to follow Rado's lead. He has a spreadsheet, and he knows exactly what games are behind each one. I really love the look of this. It looks really neat. Um, but as far as like knowing what games to play, like a spreadsheet, like a database would be really nice. So I'm going to slowly but uh, slowly but surely build that up. So thank you, Ross. I love it because it's gorgeous art, but really unique games. Yes, and that's... I, uh, some of these uh, I, I knew I wanted to showcase. For instance, I really wanted to put uh, Brass up there, Tidal Blades, uh, and, uh, of course, Twilight Imperium. Uh, but then, you know, I, I just, um, whatever sort of caught my eye in the moment, um, I just sort of did that. And um, I do want to put maybe a little more thought, because I, I still, I literally have about 50 games sitting here in the hallway uh, leading into our uh, room here. And I have another hundred or so like on the ground uh it's a mess but i really do love the look of this um so i want to i'm going to be a little more thoughtful i did i i like putting santa monica only because it's you know close to la and again southern california the zularetto love the panda and there's another panda the takanoko um i right behind me i don't know if y'all can see i have valley of the kings that one i'm going to replace i just put that up there um, I, I would like to get something a little more artful. I have Planet because I thought that was a unique game and I love that. Uh, Catan, of course, that's that'll probably be replaced. That's the 25th ed anniversary edition. Um, and yeah, got some others. I, I, I really wanted Chai up there because I, I do enjoy tea. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go back and figure out, an, um, not really a system, but just uh, make some better, uh, different choices uh, as to what I want to showcase. Uh, beautiful art, gorgeous art, but you really unique games. Thank you, uh, Ross. Um, Bobby, <laughs> yeah, well, how is Bobby, by the way? It's a great mix, but that's the fun part of the display window look. You can switch it up however you place. Yeah, agreed. That's that's one thing. I, I do like, this one's a little dark for my taste. Uh, Court of the Dead, um, what's it called? Uh, Mourner's Call. And it's a little dark for my taste, but I really love that game. I think it's an underrated game. Sort of long lines of like Blood Rage style area control. Um, it's got a little semi-cooperative uh, bit to it as well, but I, I've always liked that game. Um, so I, I put that up there, but the art's probably not my favorite, but I mean, it's, it's, the art is, I mean, it's beautiful. It's just very dark, right? It's a, I mean, you're like talking like heaven and hell type um, stuff. Wingspan, of course, had to have that up there. Absolutely love that. The Quest for El Dorado, I, I just, I love that game, but I think I'm going to switch that one out. Um, oh, Ex Libris. I'll probably move Ex Libris more towards like right next to me. Um, Ex Libris, Libris, I like um, that game a lot because anything with a book theme, I'm all about. I go goo goo over books. Cause before I was like a board game nerd, I was a book nerd. Um, and that's why I'm doing the Star Wars readings these days, just because I want to read more. And I used to read like at least a couple of dozen books a year. And that has really fallen off just because I've really thrown myself into the whole board game uh, content creation thing and I just ha don't have time but I'm making time now but thank you again I, I appreciate that and Ross I was uh, honestly I was inspired by you uh, John Gonzalez uh, Book of Nerds and a couple of other people who are like rearranging those shelves and I was like yeah I want to do that too and then when I was doing it I was like well why don't I go back to that look that Rado had I, I sort of like that and it, the one fun thing about this and one cool thing is it gives you extra shelf space, right? So you're just pushing like the four or five games that you have them behind them, right? Uh, we'll do this one here. So I've got four games there, uh, these four here, and now I can put a fifth one there. So right off the bat, you know, I've got, a, these are two four by fours, so I get 16 additional games um, on the uh, shelves here. So cool, 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 thank you. Um, so Star Wars Unlocked, I have never, Played this game. Um, oops, did I just? And I think I just messed this up. Uh oh. Did I take the cards out of order here? Uh oh. Start here. Okay, we're gonna have to figure out what I messed up. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, we do have the tutorial. We can do the tutorial. Why don't we do that? Okay. So let's go back to the game there. Okay. So I have never played, I, I've played Unlock games before, but never the Star Wars is the first time. Uh, here's the tutorial. And 
Ooh, step-by-step -step solutions. We don't want to look into that, but folks. There's a map, too. I think this is for one of the, the main missions. Oh, it's a double-sided. Okay. Uh, and to the coordinates you're choosing. Oh, interesting. Okay, and the Jetta map. Uh, unfold this map only when instructed. Oops. Well, I wasn't instructed. That was a spoiler. And that's what happens, folks. <laughs> okay, there's that. And uh, unlock. All right, so start here. Is this the start? Escape from, oh, Escape from Hoth is over here. So some of these cards got messed up. This was a, a trade from my friend Patrick. Shout out to Patrick. Okay, let's get the Star Wars Unlock app happening, which I have here. And we have the tutorial. Uh, oh, it's a 10 minute tutorial, okay. <clears throat> Welcome to Unlock Star Wars game. You'll find all the elements of an escape room in this game. Confronted with puzzles, codes to decipher, objects to put together, and tricks to discover. For this first adventure, you are an Imperial spy who has been captured by the Rebellion. You've been locked in a crude holding cell inside a secret rebel base. Launch the Star Wars Unlock escape game app. Select the scenario tutorial and press start. You now have 10 minutes to get out of your first adventure. Are you stuck? You may ask for hints in the app by entering the card number. Okay, let's press start. And we're going to flip this card over. Holding cell. Here is the holding cell you are locked in. Several elements are visible. You may now search and reveal the five cards whose numbers you can see. So we have 21, 35, 69, 11, and 42. Is there. All right. 42 is a data screen. The power seems to be out. You can combine this object with a blue number. So this is the red. If the total corresponds to a card in the deck, you may reveal that card. Okay, so we're going to continue exploring in our holding cell. 35 is a lock crate. You can combine this with a blue number and then add the numbers together. Hey, there's a blue one. A code cylinder. You can combine this object with a red number, add their numbers together. What else is here? The exit door. Okay. It is controlled by a digital code. To get out and finish the tutorial, you must enter a four digit code into the app. Okay. And finally, number 69 is a small electric panel with metal pins. To use it, press the machine button on the app and enter the number of this card, number 69. Okay, so first we're going to have to do either this blue and this red or this blue and this red. So we have a code cylinder, a lock crate, and a data screen. So I'm going to say uh, 11 and 35. So we add, enter that here. Whoops. Okay. Uh, so find this object with a blue number, add their numbers together. If the total corresponds to a card in the deck, you may reveal that card. So we got 46. Let's see if there's a 46. There is a 46. Hey, very good. The crate is open. Discard cards 11 and 35. Okay. Okay. Look closely at the picture. There are two interesting elements. If you see a number, reveal the corresponding card. So I'm going to look at this real close. I see a number 16. Right there in the corner. Hey, there it is, 16. A length of wiring with rings on the end. You can combine this object with a red number. To do so, add the numbers together. So we've got this one. So we're going to put the length of wiring with the data screen. So that is uh, 58. Oh, eight. No, it's 58. Nope, that didn't work. That's not working. Huh. Is it supposed to be 48? Am I already uh, messed up here? <laughs> uh, to use, uh, enter the number of this card. Oh, okay, let's try this small electric panel. Uh, so machine, uh, got number 69. To use this machine, you must press 
the buttons matching the correct pins and press OK. You lose one minute per error. It is best to first understand which are the correct pins before using the machine. Okay. Oh, so we need to figure out which pins to use. Wow. So am I adding this correctly? Six plus 16 plus 42 is 58, right? But there is no 58 in our um, tutorial here. Is this wrong, really? Okay. Well, we let's look more a little more closely here. Um, elements. Okay. Oh, okay. So in addition to the number 16, I see this thing on the side of the box, and it's like a line from this to this. So that I believe that corresponds to the small electric panel and. Um, we're going to line up this one with this one. So this with this. Okay. So we're going straight there. It's okay. Hey, add this to a blue number. So this plus this is 25, which means we unlock this. Hey, there it is. Well done. You have restored power to the machine by, or you have restored power by placing the wire on the machine. So discard card 16, 46, and 69 and we add this to this 6 plus 42 is 48 okay which we flip over now and well played this screen is on you this should help you get out so now uh, it says discard cards 25 and 42 enter the code on the code part of the app to get out <clears throat> so we have code 7 4 zero eight okay no these are, these are the correct numbers but they aren't in the right order think it over the color oh no they're not in the right order what oh okay so um no this is okay so the colors are going to help and this is a bummer because this is not going to help me as a colorblind player this is the one bummer about it folks um <clears throat> i've got yellow in the middle blue right underneath it now the red and green are going to be tough. I think red, so let's do the code. I think red is first, so four, then yellow, zero, blue, seven, and then green, eight. Code incorrect, lose one minute. Ah! Oh my gosh, I hope, I wish Michelle was here to help me with the colors. Okay, so let's try red is eight. We'll try that eight, and then zero, and then seven, and then four. Well done, yay, you have finished the tutorial. You can now check your score, your time, and the penalties incurred. Okay, so I don't know what it says here. It says Star Wars Unlock. Six minutes, uh, we did lose one minute for the incorrect code because of the colorblind issues. But other than that, hey, made it, woohoo! Take that, you rebel scum. Okay, so let's see, uh, don't wanna leave the game. What is that? Oh, share? No, I don't want to share that. I guess leave the game. Whoops. Oh, it takes it back to the main screen. Okay. Uh, I'm well, work is giving me home with me. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And that's the tutorial, folks. Uh, thanks for hanging out. That was fun. Now, how time is it? 9.22. Now, I'm a little worried that this got all messed up here. So here's the tutorial that goes back in this part of the box. And uh, Escape from Hoth. Okay. How come these are like this? Start here, Secret Mission on Jetta. Echo Base. Let me check. Uh, so we have three, we have Escape from Hoth, Un Unforeseen Delay, and Secret Mission on Jetta. How come these are unforeseen delay? Were these supposed to be, okay. Oh, I guess you just start here, okay. Okay, well, why don't we, well, let me get this out of the way. I'll put this stuff here. Yeah, so the car, they basically we just jumped right in the tutorial. Here's all the rules. Um, 
But we have the several card types. We had the red and blue. Those are the things that you put together to try to get the numbers. Machines, codes, then other cards. I'm, I'm just fired up because it's, it's Star Wars, right? It's got all the Star Wars stuff. So combining objects, discarding cards, modifiers, machines, codes, penalties. Uh, talks about the end of the game. The game ends once you have managed to solve the last puzzle and stop the timer. Uh, hints. You can get hints if needed. The app and so forth. Okay. Oh, okay. Player rate, those different card types. So I'll leave that here. So why don't we try Escape from Hoth? Okay. All right, folks. Here we are playing some Star Wars um, Unlock. Let's read this here. Echo Base, or Escape from Hoth. Echo Base, an important rebel stronghold, has managed to remain hidden on the ice planet Hoth. Let me turn this up a little bit here. Okay. Um, I'll put the box up here too. So that's a little. There you go. Echo Base, an important rebel stronghold, has managed to remain hidden on the ice planet Hoth for some time. The hostile climate provides excellent cover and protection from the Empire, but you must always remain vigilant. You head out on a routine patrol with your trusty Tauntaun Mount, a hardy creature native to Hoth. After, uninvent after an uneventful morning, you take a brief break to rest your Tauntaun while you contact Echo Base with an update. However, Due to heavy atmospheric disturbance, you can't reach them. Your mission, continue your, your patrol, explore the ice planet, and contact Echo Base. Okay, advantage cards. Select three of the six advantage cards. Do not read them yet. Return the unselected cards to the box. Now reveal and read the three selected advantage cards. They may provide hints, clues, shortcuts, or other benefits. Okay, three of the six advantage cards. Okay, advantage cards. One, two, three. Are these all mixed up? What are these advantage cards? Oh, okay. Yeah, they are mixed up a little bit. So, match card goes there. Okay, secret mission. Okay, so, so I got it now. So this is... One, two, three, four, five, six advantage cards for that one. And then one, two. Okay. Yeah, so this must have got shifted around during the trade. Okay. So here's the six advantage cards expert pilot, inside intel, terrain mapping, droid specialist, advanced warning, hyperspace expert. Select three of them. Do not read them yet. Okay. Uh, then return the three unselect. So okay, I'm gonna ask you, chat, if you're if you're still hanging around, what would you like to see here? Which three should we go with? I'm already thinking. I want the droid specialist, right? Nothing like a good droid to help out. So I'm gonna keep the droid specialist. Um, let's see. Oh, expert pilot's probably a good one. Terrain mapping, always good. Inside Intel, Advanced Warning, Hyperspace Expert. Why don't we go with this? We're going to go with these three. We'll return these three to the box. Advanced Warning. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, is it Board Game Headquarters lamp, uh, Lab. Thank you. So we'll take Advanced Lab. I've still never soloed a long game. You're a brave man. Yeah, I am. This is the first time I'm soloing it, Ross. I just threw caution to the wind today, my friend. We, we shall see how this goes. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so with Board Game Lab, we're going to go with Advanced Warning. I want the Droid Specialist, and um, fingers crossed, may, may the Force be with you. Thank you, uh, Ross. Uh, let's go. It's either Expert Pilot or Terrain Mapping. Uh, why don't we go with, let, let's go with uh, Expert Pilot. So those three, we will return Inside Intel, Hyperspace Expert, and Terrain Mapping back to the box as instructed. And now we will read these. Expert pilot. Yeah, it says, return the unselected, uh, now reveal and read. Okay. Expert pilot. You have trained alongside your fellow snow speeder pilots from Echo Base long enough that you know when the squadron leader issues formation and attack commands. 
You need to follow these directions to the letter. Okay. Advance warning. You have learned that Imperial starships are in the system and that Echo Base is on standby. After you start the scenario, press the code key in the app and enter 6789 to gain five initial minutes. Oh, cool. And then the droid specialist. Imperial seeker droid ID numbers are related to the customized colors. Protocol droids know all kinds of languages, including encoded ones. Okay, so that's going to help us. Okay. So, now launch the app and select Escape from Hoth. Press Start, then flip this card over to begin your mission. May the Force be with you. Okay. We pressed it. Let's... And then, uh, advance warning, we enter the code. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, to get another five minutes, which we just did. Turn this over. Ooh, it's a Tauntaun. Okay, look at that. Okay, so let's move these out. Patrolling the foreign waste. So we get 1357. So we go to the box here. Yeah, right? Yay for advanced warning. Good call. Okay. So tell you what, I'm just going to leave this here. Instructions will be here. And then we get the numbers 13. Oh man, these weren't in order. Darn it. That's, that's the thing. So I got this traded from uh, a friend of mine traded this for me. So why don't I do this real quick? Should I? No, I don't want to go through all of them. So let's see. 13, 57. Oh boy. Okay. Let's clean up this a bit. Sorry, folks. Let's do a little cleanup here. 67, 95, 35. Six, seven, eight, nine, so five here. I'm going to press pause on the timer because uh, we're doing some cleanup here. Uh, I've always wanted to try before you buy one of these Olax series. So, oh, thanks, uh, Board Game Lab. Glad, glad you could do that. Um, yeah, I was, I've was. i played a couple of the unlocks before. Uh, my nephews and nieces really love them, and um, they're really good at them. I... I'm not that great at these, but I, I enjoy them. They're fun, but, you know, they're not my strength. But so I figure, hey, I'm going to give it a shot here online, and then we can see how we do. And I'm I'm planning on doing each one. Like, there's three adventures in, the, in this box. Plan on doing one a week uh, every Tuesday because it's Tattooing Tuesday, friends. Uh, and then um, I will pass this on to a friend of mine. Uh, who has requested it because I, I was given this in a trade from my friend Patrick and uh, I, I told him I would pay it forward uh, as well. Um, so let's see. Let's see, 11, 19. So yeah, a little cleanup here just so we can make it easier to find the cards. But have y'all uh, played any uh, unlocks and how was your experience? I forget the ones we did. We did, I think I've done three of them. Uh, 41, 12, and 29. Okay, so I need to find 13, which should be in this stack. And then uh, 57, which should be in this stack. 67, which will be in this stack. And 30, which should be in this stack here. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to throw these here. Like 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the letters. So those all go here, off to the side. Okay. All right, let's start here again. These are the intel that I got. Okay, I've never played any of these kinds of games. Oh, okay, Amanda. Yeah, it's good for soloing, right? Um, because you know you're just trying to figure stuff out. Uh, I mean, it's I like playing with my nephews and nieces because they're super smart and they they figure this out the stuff out so fast. Same with Lauren, my stepdaughter. She is really, her and her crew um, are really good at this stuff. I am not. Say, are these replayable or are they one and done? I am assuming they are one and done. If it's anything like the other unlocks, it's you know it's a one and done adventure. 
But if you're like me and you tend to forget stuff, you could, you know, put it away for like a year. And because I could totally play an unlock game I did like my first one a couple of years ago. I bet you if I played it now, I wouldn't remember most of it. So, <laughs> okay, let's take a look at these. 13, 57. God, oh, so cool. Again, I, I'm so excited because it's Star Wars, folks. So we have uh, the macro binoculars. We have the blaster pistol. We have droid signals. And we have the tauntaun mount. Okay. So the tauntaun mount. Oh, and let me start the uh, timer again. Okay. So this blue are, is going to go with the red, right? So let's see. Let's use the tauntaun mount. And we're going to need some kind of code for the droid signals. Echo-based security protocols have been protocols have been triggered. Radar indicates four Imperial droids position around the perimeter. You need to retrieve their ID numbers in the correct order from your position. Once you have them, press the code in the app, then enter the code, digital code. Okay, blaster pistol, macro, macro binoculars. Your blaster has seen better days. It only has enough power for an emergency, so use it wisely. Uh-oh. Um, oh, what's this? Hit an object. You will get a better view on the ridge behind you. Oh, was that a free hint? Really? The ridge behind me. Okay, so do I... I'll probably use the binoculars. Okay. Your faithful Tauntaun. These creatures are well adapted to travel quickly along Hoth's surface. Okay. Okay. Okay, start. So we're here. Okay. So I'm looking closely at these things. So you want to put the... Do I want to put the macro binoculars together with a blaster pistol? Why would we do that? I have no idea what to do, folks. Okay. So we have we so the goal here this section we need to get that code, but oh man I wish they would merge these unlock games with the portal games crime series using QR code they could make multiple yeah who knows if they they'll ever do that that would be cool, um let me take a look so these cards sometimes they have like clues embedded in the cards if you look closely enough. Yeah, the blaster pistol has enough power for an emergency, so use it wisely. <clears throat> like, why would you put the blaster pistol together with the macro binoculars? Like, to me, it would make sense if I had the macro binoculars using it on my Tauntaun, but those are both blue, so they don't go together. You want to put a blue and a red together. So do you want to put the Tauntaun with the blaster pistol? What does that mean? Are you, am I going to shoot something? Or the macro binoculars with this. So 57 plus 13 is 68. Is there a 68 card? There is a 68. Okay. Uh, no, that's not what I'm counting wrong. It is 70. 57 plus 13 is 70. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't even do math. Okay, so there's a 70. What if we did Tauntaun with Blaster Pistol? That is 87. There is an 87 as well. Ugh. Am I going to shoot something? Oh, macro binoculars and blaster pistol. I don't want to shoot anything, so let's do this. Let's go to 70. Okay. Shoot the binoculars. This makes no sense at all. <laughs> Press the penalty button once. Yeah, see, that doesn't make sense, so I just lost a minute. Great. Discard this card. Okay, yeah, that totally didn't make sense. Why did I do that? Okay. Um, so are we going to shoot the Tauntaun? I don't know. Let's look at this a little more closely. Is there anything that gives us a hint? There's a bunch of snow here. I don't, I, I'm using the app, so I can't use my green screen camera. A lot of y'all can help me out. Let me do this. Like, I don't see anything there. Let's look at maybe the Tauntaun.
Okay, I suck at these games. That's what I'm, I'm going to say that right now. Patrolling the frozen waste. Hoth's desolate frozen surface is such an intimidating environment. Well, we might as well shoot the Tauntaun and uh, open its gut so we can hide in it, right? And sleep in it. How are we going to find these numbers? Darn it. Am I really going to get a hint? Do I need a hint? Uh, it would be thematic to shoot the Tauntaun and climb inside, right? Totally. All right, we're doing it. 87. You won't be able to survive out here if you shoot your Tauntaun. Press the penalty button. Darn it, lost another minute. Discard the card. <laughs> okay, we're in trouble, folks. Um, so, this is, wow, I'm terrible at this. How are we, so we need to find the ID numbers in the correct order from your position. So obviously we have to use the macro binoculars. We're gonna try to find these um, numbers, but I don't know what the heck. Where's the hint? Okay, we're, we're going to a hint. Oh, how do you do the hints? Let me press pause. So to get a hint, um, I do you put the number of the card? Hints, during the game, when it lost, uh, enter the number of a revealed card. Okay. Let's get a hint on how to use the um, binoculars. So hint number 13. Hint number 13. Some areas are too dangerous to go through. Before taking any risk, you can scan the horizon. Okay, how do you do that? So that was hint one. Solution. Would you like the solution? You can review later in the review hints. Yes. Scan the 13. Scan 13, the horizon. Hidden 35. Wait, what? I see no number 35 on here. Wait, is that? No, that's not it, is it? Oh my gosh. Well, it says 35. So there's a number 35 somewhere on this card. So take card, so 35 plus 13 is 48. Take card 48. 48, okay, let me close out of the hint. I can't believe we got a hint on the very first thing. Well, actually I can, I'm terrible at these games. Okay, 48 is here. Okay. Oh, hey, Hoth's Icy Foothills. So now we discard 13 and 35, which we didn't use. You scan the bleak horizon. Your instincts tell you something is out there. To investigate the surroundings, press machine in the app, then enter 48. Okay, machine, 48. Oh, look at that. What the heck? So there, here's our macro binoculars we're using. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Can I, I can't do anything. Are we supposed to look at this and figure, okay, is there any, I'm trying to find numbers. Something is out there. Investigate and press the machine in the app that enter 48. Okay, well something's out there. And it looks like the horizon. Can I zoom in on this? No. Okay. Let me press that again. So 48. Oh, it's totally like 3D. Okay, so, wow. Okay, so you can totally like... Okay. Sorry, I can't capture this neatly online here, but and it's three. You can a three sixty degree view. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, I see an imperial droid. Uh, beep, you seek a seeker droid. Take card one. Yeah, I saw the droid. Sweet. All right, so we found the seeker droid. So that's card one. Oh, that's awesome. What a cool way to do that. Okay, there it is. Uh, far in the distance, you spot an imperial droid. Uh, so I got. This is, uh, we discard 48. And hey, it's a red card. 
And now, since we saw the seeker droid, why don't we put the blue with the red, so that is 78. Or hopefully we can ride to the uh, Imperial droid. So 78. Come on, 78, where are you? Oh, there's no 78? 30, oh no, plus 30 plus 1, sorry, 31. I don't know what I'm trying to add here. I'm so giddy with excitement, I can't even add. Okay, there's 31. So hopefully we can ride to the Imperial droid. Oh no, the Wampa attacks. Oh no, you ride your Tauntaun across the frozen wasteland, sneaking up on the Imperial droid. From out of nowhere, a Wampa attacks you. Your Tauntaun flees in terror, knocking you to the ground. You barely have time to count its teeth before fainting. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we got to use the blaster pistol now, right? Charity Board Games on the house. Hi, are you with the Rebellion or Empire? I believe I'm with the Rebellion uh, for this first mission. I am. I'm trying to find my way back to Echo Base. Uh, but thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris is a fun, amazing person who brings light to and fundraising for lots of amazing charities. That is correct. Have you recovered? Plan another live stream marathon in April. Still recovering now. We kill the Tauntaun and wait for Han Solo. Ha ha, right? Where you left. Chris, I hope the uh, charity fundraising went well this weekend, friend. Um, we are playing the first uh, escape. What is this called? Uh, this event or the, um, the Hoth one. I forgot what it's called. What is this called? I, told, I already forgot what it's called. It is the... Escape from Hoth. That's the scenario we're playing. So we've been attacked by a Wampa. Uh, so I discard 30. So the Tauntaun has left us, unfortunately. Um, so what is this card? This card is a... Gray cards. Other... Okay, so... we got to find something to do with this Tauntaun. I mean, this uh, Wampa. I'm assuming we're going to use the Blaster Pistol. So can we use that... So that would be 88. Is there an 88? I hope so. Okay, there's no 88. Okay. Uh, nice. Empire Strikes Back, best movie. Absolutely. The best movie in this series. I agree. Okay, so I'm looking at the Wampa. Got a bunch of teeth. Uh, it, says, it says I've fainted. So now what? I can't use the blaster pistol on it. I mean, did I lose? Did I just lose the game? <laughs> uh, let's get a hint. Uh, 31. Okay. There are 19 teeth. Oh, okay. So there's our hint. 19 teeth. So that 19 has got to be add to the blaster pistol. So... Uh, 19 plus 57, oh my gosh, math, uh, 76. Is there a 76 card? Do I know how to do math? 19. That's 76, right? I don't think there's a 76 card in here. 77, 75, 71, 72. There's no 76. Or should we add the 19 to the Wampa card? That would be 9, 10, 50. Oh no, Blaster Pistol with Wampa would be 80, 88. <clears throat> Did we try that already? No, there's no 88. Hmm. 19. Nineteen plus Yeah, seventy six. Nineteen plus thirty one is fifty. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Oh, see, so it says you barely have time to count its teeth, and count its teeth is in bold, so obviously I should have been paying attention to that. 
So 19, I wouldn't put it in here, not in the code thing. Um, am I supposed to get rid of this card? I don't know. I feel like we're supposed to get rid of this. So we have the Wampa, 19 teeth. And, um, wow. Oh, you take card 19. Duh. Yeah, obviously I'm not a pro at this, but. Okay, let's see what happens. The Wampus Cave. <laughs> so we get rid of card number 31. Um, oh, I, I love this, uh, folks. This is such a cool little thing. We have to, we, we're suspended upside down. You wake up in a frozen cave hanging by your feet. Fortunately, there is no sign of the Wampa. Okay, so we are upside down. I'm going to look real close here. Hanging by your feet. This is where I think we got to use the blaster pistol, right? 57 plus 19. No, that's the same thing. So we're hanging by our feet. I'm looking at the card. Where There's like... Oh, okay. So here we are here. We're hanging here. Like, like our friend Luke Skywalker did. Remember back in the day? But we don't have a lightsaber. We have a blaster pistol. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, scruffy nerf herder. So what do we do? How are we going to get out of here? We don't have a lightsaber. We still have our blaster pistol. Now, are we supposed to get rid of this card? The real secret joy? I think we are. I've been forgetting to uh, discard cards. So, discard. No, those. Okay. 13, 35, 30. Okay. Um... Well, I'll leave those there for now. But we're in the Wampix Cave. How the heck are we? Do we get out of here? Hanging by your, hanging by your feet is in bold. So I'm wondering if there's a, a clue. Here. It's got to be near your feet. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's like little uh, icicles. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm playing the Escape from Hoth scenario. I'm terrible at this, Ben. I've already used two hints. So we're at the Wampus Cave, hanging by our feet. Uh, yeah, I want to shoot the Wampa, but I don't know. Like, I have the blaster pistol. I tried to find the card number 76. That's not going to help. Uh, so we discarded the card 31. Got to do something to shoot, right? I mean, I, I'm looking at the icicles. I'm going to put this up here. I believe Ben has played this. Ben, you should be our, our hint. I should ask you for hints. Huh. I mean, I don't see anything. I probably need a magnifying glass. My I'm, my eyes are, I have my glasses, but my eyes are still like, what the heck? Hanging by your feet. Fortunately, there's no sign of the Wampa. Okay, we're going to the hint. This is card 19. There is a new number when you flip it. Oh, really? Oh, so 61, is that right? Yeah. Thanks, Ben. See, we don't have to spend a thing there. 61 or 19. Okay, so it was 19. And then we flip it around and hey, 61. There it is. The Wampus Cave. With great effort, you manage to free your feet from the ice and fall to the ground. Yay. Uh, so this says discard number 19. And then pull card number 12. Thanks, Ben. 
Okay, there's 12. Okay. Sealed cave entrance. The Wampa place a large heavy rock in front of the cave entrance, sealing the only escape route. So it's a blue one, so we want to connect it with a red one. Does that mean we use our blaster pistol now? I don't feel like that would be helpful. There is a secret. Use the force. Yeah, how do I use the force? Sealed cave entrance. Previous card. Oh. What is the secret? Does it align with the cave card? Oh, good call. <clears throat> card 61. Oh, card 61. Oh, is that an 83? Eighty-three. Okay. Yeah, it looks like some bones or something were in the shape of an eighty-three. Thanks, Ben. Oh, see card twelve on I see twelve on card sixty-one. Sixty-one. Okay, the sixty-one is discarded. So let's do eighty-three. A an animal bone. The giant bone is all that is left from some unfortunate creature. Devoured by the Wampa. Okay. So are we going to use the bone with um, to try to pry this boulder? So that would be 95. Okay. Sudden snowstorm. You see, you use the bone as a lever and the stone rolls away. Hey, leaving the cave, you see a snowstorm moving in. You need to call for help. Okay. So we discard cards 12, 61, and 83. And we need to call for help. How do, how do we do that? We need to enter, um, we need to use a machine of some sort. What the heck? I'm stumped. Uh, gotta get back to my moisture <laughs> evaporators may force me with you. Thank you, Chris, have a great day. The bone as a lever and stone need to call for help. Call for help. My, how might you do that? <clears throat> I don't know. Call for help? Yell? Oh man. There's someone trying to gonna ban you. So anyone want to be famous? Where's the bell? Oh, thanks, uh, Ben, for the. Yeah, where's that ban hammer? How do I ban someone? I don't know how to ban someone. Oh, wait, do I click on this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ban. Bye-bye. I don't want to be famous. Okay. How do I get rid of this? Oh, no. <clears throat> okay. How do I call for help? How would I do that? I want to use... I'm gonna write, I don't have any tools on here. Um, hmm. Oh, by the way, what time is it? It's almost 10. I wanted to raid the Brothers Murph um, at 10 because then I, then I can go do my thing. I've got errands to run today. Uh, so, whoops. Are they online right now? Okay, they. I believe they're online. They're going to go live in about a minute. Okay, so we're going to raid them afterwards, folks. 
Uh, actually, I probably won't get through this game. I think I'm going to... So I, I wanted to... I, I didn't think it would take this long, honestly. So I, for some reason, I thought it would be really good at this, but I am not. Uh, let me get the rating thing. Just uh, We'll rate in a few minutes. But until then, how can I... Gosh. No worries, uh, Amanda. Um, how am I going to get this call for help? How would I do that, Ben says. Um, seal cave entrance. Think literally. Call for help. Hello, help. I wouldn't talk into the thing. Out loud, there's an app. Help. Machine. Oh, so I'd use the machine. And then do I put 95? Hey. Wait, oh no, is that a hint? Call for help. Help. Oh, <laughs> Worn by your cries, a team of rebels that came to rescue make a shelter to wait out the, the snowstorm. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Take card 63. Thanks, fan. <laughs> that is hilarious. You, I actually had to say help. Okay, so there's 63. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. It can hear you. Thank you. Okay, 63. Hey, Imperial Seeker droids. Uh-oh. Uh, so we discard 95. We grab card three, seven, five, and that's it. Okay. As a snowstorm calms down, you discover the source of the three remaining signals. Hey, here we go. Seven, three, five, seven, and unique number on its outer shell. Okay. We need to get a... Okay. So here's one Imperial droid. And then here's the other three. Uh, and we're supposed to enter. Radar indicates your Imperial four Imperial droids position around the per. We need four of these droids. I only have three. And then the colors are supposed to go in certain order here. So if we start here, are we supposed to do this maze? So this is this one here. And then this one, I assume. And then this one. So let's see, boom, boom, boom. But we don't have this one, the final one. Three, seven, five. Yeah, isn't that awesome, Amanda? I was, I was laughing, oh my gosh. How did... So 63. So I've got these three joys. I need four though. In, in order to solve the uh, code here. Where's the fourth one? Did I get rid of one by mistake? Add the Wampa. Hmm. We have this no, that's not it. Um, yeah, I don't know how to get that fourth number, folks. Three, seven, five. Code, hint, auto. What is auto? I don't want to press that. Um, Press this code. Hmm. It says three remaining droids, three remaining signals. So we have this one, the one. Is that number one? I don't know what that number is. So we found this droid, and then we have these three droids. 
Hmm, how are we gonna do this, folks? Because I have to enter, so here is the code thing. So it's gonna be 375, but we have a fourth droid, which we don't know the number for. Okay, well, tell you what, we're gonna raid the Brothers Morph in just a second here, in just a minute. Let me make sure they're live right now. I think they are. Let's see, what are they playing? Uh, the Brothers Murph, they are playing. I don't know what they're playing. Oh, I need to renew my subscription. It says resubscribe, so I got to add coming up. Um, huh. I don't know what the heck. Where is that fourth droid? 375. Be back here. If it says we have the f the three remaining droids. Okay, they're live now, so we're gonna raid them, folks. Um, but I'm dying to know what this is. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm so bad at this. So let's get a hint. Um, Sixty-seven. From the start, draw a path to reach the four signals in order. Each color corresponds to a droid. Yeah, I got that. I got three of the droids. I don't have four of the droids. Uh, where's the fourth droid? Hint. One, seven, three, five. I don't get... Oh, was this one? Oh, man. Really? One, seven. Is that how it worked? One, yeah, one, seven, three, five. Oh, my gosh. Uh, enter code. One, seven, three, five. Okay. Now you have the four. Uh, take card 33. Okay. Folks, that is it. I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to continue this next week. That's what we're going to do. Uh, let me go here. Thank you again for joining me. I'm terrible at Unlock, but I love the Star Wars theme. Uh, this has been Tattooing Tuesday. My name's Ruel Gaviola. We have read Chapter 9 of Star Wars Thrawn. We have read an excerpt of Star Wars Victory Price, the newest um, um, Alphabet Squadron novel. Uh, it's coming out March 2nd. We did a, a quick excerpt, a reading of this. Um, and thanks Ben for stopping by and then we played the tutorial and part of the first part of the unlock game oh let me press pause on this here um, we're going to be back next Tuesday 8 a.m. Pacific right here on my channel thank you so much for hanging out we're going to raid the Brothers Murph uh, until later tonight 7 p.m. Pacific I'll be back here don't forget Amanda and John are on board in East LA at Book of Nerds uh, then it's at 3 p.m. Pacific all right have a great day, folks. See you later, and may the Force be with you. Bye.